Wild one G's. Actually, you know what? You know what I forgot? Wild one G's. Forgot the microphone all over here. Episode number 91 of the Agostino Zinga Show with me, your host, Agostino. Welcome back, man. How the fuck are you doing? Hope you're well. Hope you're fine. Hope you're feeling good. I'm feeling amazing. But I hope you guys are doing good. It's Wednesday morning out here in London town. Know what I mean? Just uh, just got out of the snort, sh- got out of the shower about half an hour ago. But I've just come back from a nice little run. I did a little um, CrossFit endurance workout this morning. Which, um, if you're wondering what CrossFit endurance, if you're like, I can say no, what is CrossFit endurance? What is this thing that you do every morning that um, somehow results in you sweating on camera and sweating through the microphone for you listening on the podcast app on your various um, smartphone devices? Well, uh, CrossFit endurance is um, a program of exercises where you incorporate body weight and sometimes uh, weight, weighted exercises with a running portion. So, for instance, you might be do you might do something like I did this morning, which is twenty push ups, twenty sit ups, and a two hundred meter run. But then you do it within a set time period or within a set uh, set amount. So today was a twelve minute AMRAP. AMRAP standing for as many rounds as possible. Today I achieved seven and a half rounds of um, two twenty push ups, twenty sit ups, and two hundred meter run. So that was fairly good. And then, um, yeah, and then that's mostly what CrossFit endurance is. And then some days you have um, stuff scheduled into your crossfit endurance workout that needs you to do interval training or like sprint relays so if you're familiar if you ever did track in school you know that you know you have to do like um 400 meter repeats and you have to keep a a specific time right um you have to keep an average speed so that you can build up your speed and your overall endurance so when it comes to running your 5k or whatever you can smash that thing out of the park and i've got a race kind of planned i'm specking out for the end of august because I'm doing this whole like micro goals thing, so trying to stop, you know, achieve some manageable goals between now and August. So I've got a race kind of penciled in for the end of August that I haven't really um, confirmed yet. Once I've confirmed, I will of course let you know because you know you guys are interested, right? 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 Okay, cool. Whatever. Anyway, welcome back. Next year's English show episode number ninety-one. We're out of the fucking eighties. I'm so happy out of the 80s. I can't wait to hit the 100s. But it's going to happen very, very soon because I'm consistent, right? I'm fucking consistent. It's funny because I've been doing it for two years, right? But I've been so inconsistent that I'm only in the 90s, really. Because if I've been in it for two years and I've uploaded two episodes a week for two years, then I'll be, I'd be way into my 300s, I think, now, episodes. But what's interesting is I can, I can feel like I'm a lot more comfortable speaking into a microphone. And it's best to, especially, specifically... I can feel that I'm much more comfortable speaking to a camera. So if you guys are watching via YouTube now, I'm sure you would have noticed a bit of a difference from when I first uploaded a video portion of my podcast to now. I hope so. Um, obviously, the glasses sometimes do help with the keeping of the eye contact, right? Because you you know you don't you don't know where I'm looking at when I've got my shades on. But overall, I think I'm much. I, feel, I don't know, I think I'm much com- comfortable. There's some people have little tricks about you know how to talk into a camera especially when you're doing vlogging and stuff to pretend it's a person and all the other things to pretend you're talking to an audience but i just like to speak into it i don't really have that much of a philosophy behind who i'm speaking to um i just like to kind of share my point of view and hopefully it resonates with the public at large Ah! episode 91 episode 91 91 91 91 yeah i just had a nice little breakfast too had three fried eggs a couple spring onions sprinkled on top with some chili flakes and some spinach it's my go-to breakfast at the moment it's really it's amazing um i'm just so happy that i've discovered it and then in the fridge i, I happen to stumble upon a small little pot of um leftover bacon uh coujons or little you know little little squares that i made a couple of days ago that i had packed in a little um container hopefully i don't get sick from it but i should be okay um and then had that and yeah now's my breakfast basically so i'm pretty I'm, i feel pretty well fed yesterday i kind of went off the rails when it comes to my whole keto diet though um i don't know what happened i had, I had a weird sugar craving so i ended up going to MS and buying like a soft bacon and chicken bap and some chocolates and shit i don't know why but i just couldn't handle it today that day but you know usually i've been all right for the week but i don't know i just gave into my urges and i kind of I threw that day away, but I'm gonna get back on the wagon today, tomorrow, Friday, and then you know, the whole weekend should be okay. But it's been it's been pretty easy, man. The whole fasting thing, man. I think people make such a big effort out of it, it's such a big deal. But I found it fairly easy to um, eat between the hours of like nine to four, and then not eat again until the following morning. It's been pretty easy, like for me. Again, um, I think I mentioned it previously. I'm not the biggest foodie in the world. Um, 
I'm not, I, I don't, uh, I don't wrap up. I don't have as much emotion tied to food as other people do. Um, some people get, some people have that hangry thing, right? I'm hangry, right? Or when they wake up, like, I don't like the mornings. Like, fuck off, right? Grow up. I'm hangry. You're a grown up. Go to Pret Manger and buy yourself a sandwich. You know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal. But I'm not that, I don't have that inclination in me anyway. Even if I was a normal human being, I wouldn't have that inclination in me. I generally treat food as like fuel units, which is probably can explain the guns. Huh? I'd probably explain the fucking guns I'm flexing to the camera. No. But now, um, yeah, I treat food as like fuel. I don't really have that much of an um, emotional tie to it. So I, I, I'm probably more susceptible to diets like uh, intermittent fasting, right? Because, you know, I, it just, it, it, it kind of streamlines my life and gets, it gets rid of any sort of like decision-making fatigue, right? Because in the mornings I have the same sort of breakfast. I have, so I have fried eggs, scrambled eggs, spinach, spring onions, right? Again and again and again every day. Now, you know, some people might complain about the cholesterol and that shit, but, you know, you guys can sod off. Then I might have some healthy fats. I can have avocado as well with it on the side. Today I didn't have that because it's not ripe enough. And then for breakfast, and then for lunch, sorry, I'll have like a chicken salad, avocado, I mean a chi- uh, salad, a salad and chicken or a chicken salad? A chicken salad or salad and chicken? A salad and chicken? Hmm. A salad with chicken. What would you say? Chicken salad? A chicken salad for lunch, right? I'd have a chicken salad for lunch with an olive oil vinaigrette. So very, very basic. So that's kind of what I kind of, you know, um, skirt towards. Skirt, skirt, skirt. So, um, yeah, I find it easy. I find it particularly quite easy to do. But, you know, maybe I'm an an oddball in that regard. Oh, talking about oddballs in that regard, there is that thing happening today, isn't it, right? That sneakers app, um, that anniversary of all the new sneakers, all the old sneakers coming back out again. You can buy, like, loads of weird shit, right? I'm assuming. I'm going to actually download the app now via my phone. So if you're watching this now and you're wondering why I'm on my phone because I don't like to be on my phone to do a podcast, I'm going to actually go onto the um, app store my phone is super smashed up so don't you know don't don't get don't get too um nauseated by it i still haven't fixed up my screen yet but let me see if i can do this now i'm supposed to have it so it's it's some sort of anniversary for nike right um nike are doing a anniversary for their app sneakers and they're relaunching loads of old shoes that are not loads of the old hitters that came out during the past year or so but i think there's going to be some sort of game uh, tied in with it, I think as well. That's the, I, I, I've been hearing. You have to play a game in order to unlock certain things and all that sort of shit. You know, all the, <coughs> all the annoying shit that I don't really care for. They're gonna do so. Let's see how that happens. Um, but yeah, um, apart from that, it's been a pretty decent week, I'd say, for the most part. I'm feeling really fresh. I kind of wanna. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna try and work from home tomorrow so I can get a haircut. I need to kind of get this side shaved. I kind of like it when you get a bit of a fade during the summer. You feel really fresh and stuff, so maybe I can get that done. That would be beneficial. And then, yeah, then DJing on a Friday, man. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it should be a good time to be a live. God damn. Oh, you know, yesterday I was complaining about people walk through the carriages and, you know, just sit down. I, unfortunately, I was that person yesterday because I, I jumped into the train really late. So then I had to kind of walk through and kind of, you know, find my place to be. So here it is, Day of Heat, right? But Nike, a year ago, Nike dropped the sneakers app in Europe. Today, we're dropping eight of our hottest sneakers to celebrate. All you have to do is to uh, to do to get your hands on them is to prove you know your airs from your Ablos and be fast. What? So this is the game, your airs and your Ablos. So how, how do you do this then? You have to prove your airs from your Ablos. What the fuck are you talking about? You have to know your airs from your ablos. So what does that mean? Where's the test then? Don C shoes are there too. I'm quite liking the Don C shoe, you know. Like it's it's a bit shit, right? But personally, I wouldn't personally wear them. They're a bit like Nike talky, right? But I kind of like what he did there, man. Not not my not my taste again, but you know, say la vie, bruv. Live your life. Live your best life. Okay. So what am I meant to do here? Don't hustle. Ba 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 ba. Sometimes you think these people, man, when they put these things on these apps, like, okay, cool. No, your airs from your ablos. All right. Now, how am I meant to do that? You scroll down the list. It's got it's got numbers, right? It's got this whole tinker thing here. Do I press this thing or what? Ramses? We did, uh, and be fast. Okay, cool. When's this? Today. Nothing's happening. Anyway, let me try and get up on the screen on drop day and see what happens. Hopefully, I um, haven't missed anything. 
It, to be honest, I kind of just want to get them. I kind of want to get something just for the resale because I've got a few holidays coming up. So it'd be nice to have some money um, for the holidays that I have coming up. Because as, as per usual with these things, it's always good to kind of as great as sneaker culture is and that sort of shit. Um, I listened to um, oh actually I listened to Ben Baller's interview on Hype Beast Radio, which I'm going to speak about later. But it's all good to do all that stuff. But you know, sometimes you know it's good to kind of get the money that you're. It's sometimes good to make some money from this whole streetwear sneakers culture stuff, especially if you've been entrenched in it as long as I have, right? Since the kind of inception, and kind of you know um, siphon it off to the kind of avenues in your life that you that bring you the most value. And for me, it's traveling. Um, for me, it's like you know going out. Uh, taking a brunette out for dinner, having a you know nights out and shit, partying, uh, buying books, you know, buying more equipment and whatever. That's the kind of stuff I'm more interested in, as opposed to all the other, you know, all the other hot mess. But let's see what it says here on uh, drop date. So you click on drop date, the eighth anniversary, and what does it say here? <clears throat> your airs from your ablos, right? So what's happening? Very very strange, isn't it? Today's the eighth, right? Oh, it's tomorrow. Today is the eighth. So what? What's the actual deal? What do you have to do? I'm sure I'm not the only one that's struggling here. Oh, is that video right? There's a video for the <coughs> stuff that's coming out today. I'm assuming, right? Flying it's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so what do you do then? You have to click something. You have to do something. What do you do? No idea. Thanks, Nike. No, I mean those are like. This is what sneaker culture has kind of resulted to. If you have to enter a raffle and you have to kind of subject yourself to like retweeting, tagging a friend, and all this sort of malarkey, or they or like Foot Patrol, where they force you to download an app so you can Im- force you to download their shitty app so you can enter enter a draw to luckily uh, to be lucky enough to be drawn out of a hat in order to purchase a pair, or there's this anniversary that's happening and you have no other information apart from this logo and some kind of like shitty copy that some intern wrote. It doesn't make any sense. Sneaker culture in 2018, man. Absolute gobbledygook. But yeah, like I mentioned previously, I don't, I, I kind of don't mind these um, Don C trainers, right? I think he kind of got he kind of got a bit pillared online about them. Um, they kind of remind me of a few other 80s inspired shoes. What's the ones? What's the ones that Will Smith wore in the in the in the Fresh Prince? Uh, that I had I had a pair of them as well. Will Smith Fresh Prince uh nikes let's see if i can find them he wore a pair that i ha- I actually had a vintage pair um where where are they he had a pair right and i forgot what they were called ah oh, let's see this is vintage and see what comes up vintage high tops they were yeah they were basically these right <clears throat> i forgot what they were called so i had a pair of those but I kind of don't mind these Don C shoes, honestly. They're not my taste, on, and I wouldn't wear them. But I kind of like that he's kind of taking the, um, the kind of like you know the kind of what you call it, the classic colorways of Air Trainers and high tops from the eighties of old, and kind of taking his twist and put them on on his high tops. I kind of like the way they look, personally. I'm I, I'm a big fan of them. I wouldn't necessarily wear them now. They're probably not a shoe that would, or maybe they would be a shoe you'd wear now. You know, especially since everyone's wearing the same old Yeezys or the other kind of chunky trainers. It might be an actual shoe. How much are they going for at the moment? Let's see. I'm not sure how popular they have been or if they're even sold out in that regard. Are they sold out? Maybe they are. Oh, it's up and coming. So they've, oh, they're, oh, they're not even out yet. That one on the 11th. How much would they be? I'm, I'm going to say about 120, 130. What would you guys say? The Don's, what are they called? The, the Air Jordan Don C. Which is a good look for a minute, it's like a collab with with Jordan actually, considering what those guys have done for sneaker culture at whole. Oh, okay, one one forty, not too bad actually for them. They're quite nice. I think they look really good with shorts, especially now, especially since um you seen that report that the summer is going to last until September October. That's what I saw a report about actually. Let me try to get this up on the screen and see if I can find the report. Uh, summer heat, October. I think it was on the BBC. Da, 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 da. BBC, oh, let's see, tools, time, let's see, past week, let's see what it says here. High temperatures expected, how long will the heat wave last? <coughs> this is five days ago, right? Um, 
So after so the, the, this is an article from the BBC talking about a heat wave that's happening across Europe now, right? Because I'm sure you guys are very very aware of this. Um, and the article goes on and reads as the following. After a brief burst of heavy rain last weekend, the summer heat wave is returning to some parts of the UK. Temperatures are forecast to rise again across southern England with the hot weather set to continue into the first half of next week. Meanwhile, Europe is bracing itself for the hottest ever temperatures with Spain and Portugal predicted to break the 48 Celsius. Jesus Christ! Record in Athens set in July 1977. Um... The whole weather set to persist in the south uh, of the UK throughout the weekend, says BBC weather forecaster Billy Payne. Temperatures are expected to reach the 33 Celsius in London on Friday before dropping back slightly to 29. Actually, last night was quite nice. I think it rained a little bit and it was a, bit, a little bit dark, a little bit overcast. So it was really, really cool. Um, we're, not gonna, we're probably not going to get that um, throughout the whole of the summer anyway. Plus, um, not your carnival is happening soon, isn't it, as well? Jesus, it's usually a fucking sweat box then, too. The heat wave in the southeast is forecast to continue into the start of next week with highs of 32. But from Wednesday, the weather will become fresher uh, as an area of low pressure develops. And for the rest of the week, the temperatures look set to return to more normal levels of the mid-low 20s. Um, da, 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 da. But I saw something that is going to last until October. So if that's true, that is going to be fucking nuts, mate. Actually, let me just go on a bit of a site and see if anyone's got anything about October. I, I'm pretty sure I saw something about October. I was like, what? October? Jesus! But I'm pretty sure I saw it. Let me see what it says here. Um, are any articles on the heat wave? Some extreme weather. California. Yeah, so it's ravaging across the whole of the UK at the moment. So let's see what else happens. But yeah, um, apart from that, what else have I been up to? Um, yeah, that's been it for the most part. Like I said, keeping my head down, reading loads. Oh, I've been reading this book actually called The Blue Zones. Let me dig out from my bag. Uh, called The Blue Zones, this book here by Dan Butner, which has been an absolute joy to read. I smashed through the entire it. As you can see, I've only been reading it for a week and I've already nearly finished it anyway. Really easy read. Um, he kind of goes around, essentially what he does is it he's taking, um, he's trying to find out why certain areas around the world known as Blue Zones have, when Blue Zones are basically um, areas in the world where they have the most centenarians. So as people within the bracket, I think 90 and 110. So within that kind of, uh, just within that 100 years old bracket. And trying to kind of glean if there's any lessons that we can learn um, about w why these people um, live for so long. And there's loads of really important, really nice case studies. He went to Okinawa, an island of Japan. He's gone to Sardinia and Italy. And the Sardinia one is a good example of um, how um, Western culture and how modernization has kind of hampered our overall health. And kind of how reverting back to simplicity. Because, you know, with health and diet and all that sort of shit, annoyingly, right? Because I don't know why, why it is, but I'm sure you guys have noticed it. Whenever you try and eat healthy or, like, not drink, you always kind of, you always somehow, whenever you declare that you're not drinking or eat healthy, you always kind of, like, you know, your, your group of friends suddenly turn into experts in the field of, I don't know, alcoholism or fucking diets and all that shit. They all, they, they, I mean, everyone becomes, an, everyone becomes a fucking doctor whenever you announce those kind of things. But reading this book, what I've basically learned is that simplicity and just having moderation in your diet and having some sort of physical activity have some having some sort of having some part of your life that involves you having to walk a considerable distance or get up and down are really important into kind of staving off like you know uh, things like diabetes and cancer which kill a huge portion of people and Sardinia in Italy being a good example I think uh, prior to modernization or prior to agriculture kind of coming into that region um, most of those people in that area were living you know towards you know the, the high hundreds or you know just 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 before hundreds but now with the advent of fast food chains and mobile phones coming into the area there's been a high peak in diabetes obesity within the young generation but for the most part, everyone that's in there, everyone that's contained in the book, some of them vary, some of them eat meat, some of them are vegans, um, some of them drink, some of them don't drink, some of them smoke, some of them don't smoke, like the seven-day Adventists, who are a good example too, you know, they eat a fairly healthy, balanced diet, they work out a lot, and they don't smoke or drink, or take in any um, visual audio stimuli from the secular world, so they don't listen to music, they don't, none of that shit, so there's weird sort of stuff that kind of would play into them being extremely healthy in that part, but to kind of distill it, and to kind of distill into like easy takeaways for the most part it's just get some sun go outside move around um eat a, a, a healthy and varied food it's some very 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 easy things that you can kind of glean that we can all kind of um embrace and take as lessons into our lives and i think just make stuff a bit easier um like there's there's stuff about okinawa right 
So the Okinawa lessons learned are embrace anikagi. Older Okinawans can um, readily articulate the reason that they get up in the morning. So have a why, right? So regardless if you're working on a production line or you're working in your dream job, have a why beyond that that kind of gets you up at bed in the morning. So on the hard days, you have something that is going to drive you forward, right? Um, rely on a plant-based diet. Older Okinawans have eaten a plant-based diet most of their lives. Their meals of stir-fried vegetables, sweet potatoes, and tofu are high in nutrients, low in calories. Even if you are a meat eater, vary your diet and have a po- have some portion of your diet that is plant-based or that is uh, vegan, whatever that may be. No, actually, let's say raw food plant-based because veganism can go into start eating chips and all that sort of malarkey right so have have a varied diet even if you are eating meat number three get gardening almost all okinawan centurions centenarians grow or or once grew a garden it's a source of daily physical activity that uh, that exercises the body with a wide range of motion and helps reduce the stress it's also a near constant source of fresh vegetables so obviously you kill two birds with one stone having your own garden but the activity of having to tend to that garden every single day pulling the weeds out you know what i mean like making sure everything's nice like watering everything i'm not sure i'm not a gardener but i don't know but that constant having to go out in the morning and actually tend to that garden tend to your little crop is highly 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 important we have something similar um in london where you can kind of uh, rent an allotment that can kind of help with that sort of sort of lucky but if you don't get out and exercise go out 20 minutes half an hour general exercise every single day is going to stay above loads of things eat soy the okinawans diet is rich is rich foods made with soy like tofu and miso soup again something that everyone can add into the uh, into their um diets uh maintain a moai a moai the Okinawan tradition of forming a moe provides secure social networks. Their safety uh, nets lend financial and emotional support in times of need. So basically, that idea of have, having a community, having a, a group of people that you can that you can count on and who can count on you as well, right? So that so so you're never alone. So you're not growing old and alone like some people in old people in London do um, in old people's homes and stuff. Enjoy the sunshine. Vitamin D produced by the body when it's exposed on a regular basis to sunlight promotes stronger bones and healthier bodies. So obviously that's um tough expansionary stay active all direct canals active walkers and gardeners so aside from the gardening there's a t- there's another portion of it walking which i've been incorporating a lot into my kind of uh, routine whether i was taking an extra whether i was taking a longer route home when i'm coming back whether it's taking a longer route back when i'm coming out from the gym whether it's working out essentially just to kind of add just to kind of uh, stack on top of on just kind of like to add as many um physical exercise as many physical activity portions to my day as i can right little kind of like little blocks little building blocks you can add to your day um plant and med plant and medicinal garden um that's something that i haven't done but that's an interesting part of it as well mogul ginger and turmeric are all staples of the okinawa garden and all have proven medical qualities again that's super important have an attitude a hard a hardship tempered ha- attitude has endowed okinawans with an affable smugness they are able to let their difficult early years remain the past while they enjoy today's simple pleasures i think he interviewed a few of those people who are from knocking who kind of survived the civil war in japan and they had a bit of a steely edge towards them do you know what i mean they had a bit of a personality they weren't, they weren't just um mere bodies waiting to be taken away to heaven do you know what i mean they had some sort of edge towards them but again super important book and it just simple oversimplifies it and kind of gets back to basics because obviously you know there's people that say fats are bad cholesterol is bad so many um contric cons what you call it um so many different opinions on the same topic that sometimes it's good to, to kind of go back to the basics and say look to live a, a healthy um long life just have balance you know have balance try and exercise once a day uh, for 20 minutes a day every day you know what i mean eat a nice balanced diet expose yourself to vitamin d have a group of friends that you can kind of rely on who are there for you and you are there for them and you will you will live a long and prosperous life and of course you know stave off the smoking and all that obvious stuff and excessive drinking and you'll be fine but yeah that's what i've been doing lately anyway apart from what i've been doing let's jump into the show and get some topics i've been thinking about today um first topic of the on the war oh my god so are you familiar are you have you heard info wars is done again info wars is over info wars is dead r.i.p info wars as we know it right so the other day um uh all of the social media networks kind of on like a in a weird sort of uh in a weird sort of pattern swoop they all they all kind of like took down infowars podcasts and videos and shit off their platform i think youtube started then facebook then spotify then stitcher and all these other platforms they kind of took i took away all the 
general chat. Any, anywhere you usually find your podcast and all that sort of malarkey, they've taken away um, InfoWars. And it seemed a bit, you know, seemed a bit odd because most of these companies are all privately owned uh, with the exception. No, well, most are privately owned and they're not under the same umbrella with the exception of like YouTube with Google and stuff. But they all kind of did this in unison and it kind of maybe has something in relation to the ongoing lawsuits with all the Sandy Hook victims. You know, Alex Jones, if you're not familiar, is the main protagonist behind InfoWars. Um, and he's kind of led this campaign that says that the Sandy Hook atrocity where that crazy guy went in and killed loads of kids and loads of teachers. And that's supposed to be the kids that died in that atrocity were um, crisis actors. And the whole conspiracy behind it is that they're kind of trying to push some sort of alternative agenda to take away arms from the American public that would then allow the government to take over the um, America and into some sort of civil war, like crazy conspiracy serious shit, right? Crazy shit. And obviously for the families that have been affected by this, um, they've had like, you know, ongoing trolls attacking them years upon years out, um, years after the whole situation happened. You know, they're already suffering, already in pain. And then there are these absolute dullards on the internet who are saying that what you're going through didn't actually happen. So um, he's got loads of lawsuits happening against him now at the moment. So maybe this is like something that's um, uh, maybe some of these companies have some knowledge in some knowledge that we don't have. And maybe he's going to be charged with some of these things. And maybe InfoWars will cease to exist as we know it. But yeah, InfoWars is off air. And um, I'll kind of read an article that kind of explains a little bit more about it. Um, how Alex Jones lost his InfoWars on The Verge. On Monday, the bottom dropped out for Alex Jones after a series of um, tippet disciplinary actions, which the InfoWars host um, evaded with ease. Three of the biggest tech platforms acted in near unison beginning late Saturday, Sunday night. I think somewhere around 3 a.m. And the result is that one of the popular conspiracy platforms on the internet has found his reach dramatically reduced. The great deplatforming Alex Jones began last week on Spotify and Stitcher removed InfoWars podcasts from their respective networks. On Sunday night, Apple followed suit, removing his podcast from iTunes for violating his rules against hate speech. Apple's move was followed um, almost immediately by a rash of similar moves. Facebook removes Jones's pages, citing repeated hate speech violations, and YouTube follows suit. Tem um, terminating an account that had 2.4 million subscribers. Wow, Pinterest came next. It's interesting, isn't it? How did Jones have a Pinterest? Funny. Uh, by the day's end, Infowars had major digital platforms left, had three major digital platforms left, the, op uh, the open web, Twitter, and its native apps on Android and iOS. <coughs> Jones ambassador platforms moved, telling the Washington Post, you're the wrong side of history. Mainstream media, Jones said in a text message to the Post, you should you you sold the country out and now you're going to pay for it. I love how he spoke to Washington Post via text message. Alex Jones is the best, isn't it? He didn't want his words to be construed in any kind of way, so he spoke to him via text. Uh, platform, uh, platforms have been long criticized for their not only hosting Jones, but for finding him a large audience and using social. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so that's basically been some of the criticism against him on social, right? A lot of people have been saying, why wasn't he uh, deplatformed a lot sooner? Because obviously the stuff that he's been saying is, you know, it appeals to a very, it's, it appeals to a small fringe of society. You know, conspiracy theories by their very nature, you know, they're not, they're not in their tens of millions, right? Um, and some of the stuff that he says is just fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Lizard people and all that sort of malarkey and I don't know, um, uh, sexual abuse rings and stuff ran on underneath uh, pizza parlors, which if it tend, it tend if, if it lends out to be true, then fair be. Didn't he say something along the lines of like Barack Obama was fucking guys every week or some shit like that? Like nutty stuff, absolutely nutty things. But in terms of free speech, right, it seems a bit um, counterintuitive to take away um, Alex Jones's platform because what if you've seen it, if you follow him on Twitter. What you've seen now is a concerted effort with all these people on the on the right side or, or on the conservative end now who didn't even agree with Alex Jones saying, OK, cool, you've kind of deplatformed one of our own. Now we're going to show you um, we're going to show you that that was a mistake. So now there's a concerted effort to push Alex Jones's app, his InfoWars app um, to be number one as a, one of the free apps on iOS and Android. And it, I don't know, so far from the screenshots I've seen online, it is sort of kind of creeping up. And it's kind of done the opposite. If, if anything, it's kind of made his voice louder now, right? So now he's like, you know, he can say, look, I told you. I told you there were conspiracies to shut us up. I told you they didn't want this invention to get out there. I told you. I told you, to, you know, they wouldn't go to this effort if I wasn't speaking the truth. So if anything, it's just made his voice louder. And I think the whole premise of free speech, I think I've saw a, a good little quote from, um, um, I don't know who it was, actually. 
But yeah, the whole premise of hate speech, I think, for the most part, is to allow people to say whatever they want to say, however wacky it is, right? And for us, the public, to judge whether or not it, what you say has merit or not. So that over time, if what you're saying doesn't have any merit, people just stop listening to you and you'll slowly but surely disappear. But if you silence people and if you say that um, what they have to say is forbidden, right? Or it's not allowed to be speaking, uh, it's not allowed to be spoken about aloud or people shouldn't hear it or it's against the, it's against the law or whatever that may be said, then people are going to be more intrigued and going to kind of kind of want to go seek it out. And I think if anything, this is kind of amplified at the um platform. It's kind of allowed his voice to to become even louder than it was previously, honestly. Because some of these videos, you watch them, some of these rambling two-hour-long um, conspiracy-laden videos where he's got um, loads of printouts skewed all over the, the table. He's got this fucking um, camera that uh, is from the ceiling downwards, so you can kind of zoom in onto some printed documents that he prints out i'm assuming he prints them out because he knows some websites take stuff down right so he does so just look you know make sure that you know the the what you call it the corrupt media or the, or the mainstream media doesn't take shit down he kind of prints little papers out whatever it's all a bit crazy anyway for the most part just let the crazy guys speak in it and if crazy people want to hear him let the crazies have it but you can't silence someone i think that's the only thing that i'm a <coughs> <coughs> I'm a little bit on the fence of, but then on the same token, they are privately owned companies. If they don't want someone to be on their platform for whatever reason, they can do. And sometimes if you come out and say w exactly why that person's got taken off our platform, what then humans then do um, automatically is that they'll push that line, right? So they'll try, you know, if you tell someone, okay, you're taking off the platform because you swore seven times on your video. What they'll then end up doing is that every sub subsequent video after that, they'll start swearing six times. Do you know what I mean? Just to push that line because they know they can get away with it. But if you're a private owned company and you don't want to attract a certain group of people on your app, then you're more than welcome to do that. But I don't, I think it's a bit unfair for a conservative person, someone on the right side of it, who's kind of a bit conservative and has wacky views for them to be banned. But for all those people on the left hand side who are fucking nuts too, who say like, I don't know, babies can choose what gender they can be assigned and all that sort of malarkey. They, they also have an equal voice. That doesn't make any sense either. I don't think that's that's right on that regard. Do you know what I mean? On either end. I think extremists on both ends um, should be allowed to say whatever wacky stuff they want to say and the people in the middle should make up their mind whether or not whatever they say has any sort of value. But I thought that was just funny. Um, a concerted effort to take him off the social media has made his platform even bigger. Twitter has still allowed him to be on the app though, so he's still tweeting a lot on there. So if you want to follow Alex Jones and all these crazy ramblings, I, I implore you to visit him on Twitter because there's some absolute gold happening there now. Um, him and Candace Owens are having an absolute blast on social media at the moment. Um, absolute fire breathers, man. Mainstream media. Oh, TV stuff. So I've been watching this TV show actually called Little Women in LA. Oh my God. So it's based on these little people who I'm going to try and... Um, hopefully that's a, not a derogatory term and I'm not fucking it up at the moment. But there's a show on, um, on TV that I'm watching. Well, on, on, I'm streaming online. And it's called Little Women of L.A., right? It is the fucking best, right? So, uh, Little Women L.A. is a sh is a show, is an, LA, is a, is an American reality TV show that debuted on 27 May 2014. Lifetime series, congratulations to the lives of little women who are friends uh, living in Los Angeles. The show's success has resulted in several spin-offs, including Little Women, uh, Tara's Little Family, Little Women NY, Atlanta, and Little Women Dallas. Honestly, right? It is one of the best shows I've watched this year. <clears throat> I'm not the biggest fan of reality TV shows for the most part, especially when they're overproduced, especially when the people on the show I'm familiar with. Like, for instance, I'm never going to watch a Love Island or uh, Made in Chelsea or anyways, Essex because I grew up with these people, right? I went to school with these type of uh, dullards and I don't... Not dullards, again. Let's take that back. I went back to... I went to school with these kind of people and I don't really... I don't really like having to be reminded of the people I went to school with again and again. It, it's not funny to me. I mean, I think to everyone else it's a bit cute. It's a bit interesting to see people, how they live. But I've had to part with that for like 16 years. And I'm, I'm, I'm cool on that, right? For the most part. I, you know what I mean, good props to you if you want to watch it, but I'm not interested. Um, love and hip hop, I'm not really interested in either because it's just too much relationshipy, lovey stuff that I don't, don't give a fuck about, right? It's that whole idea behind every conversation has to do with like, oh, boys and girls are like, what do if if you're dating a girl for two weeks and she hasn't opened the door for you? Who are sort of like you know those sort of boring questions? I don't give a fuck about. But um um Little Women in L A 
is really amazing because if anything actually should i try and get a trailer up and see if it views let me try and see if i can get a trailer up that isn't on youtube so i won't, don't get taken off because youtube has been a bit annoying lately with removing some of my videos because i'm playing trailers that are available on the actual platform itself let's see so little if i get it little women la type that up here trailer see if i can get it up there ba -ba -bang, ba -ba -bang. lifetime 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 actually you know what i can't get the trailer up but you can kind of see that you can kind of get the general gist of it on here right can you see that little women la i've decorated can you check it out and the reason why i think it's amazing right for the most part is that it goes to show that everyone it's a big don't get me wrong it's a bit exploitive in some in some regards right there's a there's these um tiny twins who are these kind of mexican uh, little women who kind of have the biggest asses which is funny isn't it like all little women have the biggest bums i guess because i don't know maybe because it's a it's one of the biggest muscles in your body group and if you everything else is shrunken and maybe that exaggerates your bum but they have the biggest asses you've seen and they can twerk and all that malarkey so it's a bit exploitive in that in that sense for the most part because you know every time they're dancing the camera always seems to zoom in on their bums <laughs> which is fucking annoying <laughs> which must be annoying but um there's also a weird thing right like super fucking weird right with a couple of the girls on there with black dudes i don't know what it is are black dudes into little women because the brunette mentioned it to me the other day right there's two girls on the on the thing um called left cheek and right cheek right and they both tend and they both seem to have baby daddies or guys in, involved in their life who happen to be black one of them has a baby daddy who's kind of um a state who's kind of like an absentee dad right they're not together but they kind of like are together sort of thing so he, he kind of comes through and smashes when he wants to right but then the woman kind of takes a stand and you know she does a she does a kind of the standard thing that women do in that kind of relationship where they kind of pretend to take a stand but then they kind of go back again she so she goes out to she goes out on a date to kind of make the guy jealous and she goes out and she happens to go out on a date don't get me wrong it's in atlanta so that might be uh, the the that might be a bit of a skewed population bias because you know there is a few black people in atlanta for the most part she goes out to a club and guess who pulls her another black dude right so i was wondering right are black guys really into tiny women little women is that a thing that is nuts, isn't it? Just because they got big bums, like it's just that's it. And they, and they, and they don't even have big bums in the term in the sense that they have an actual ass. It's more so because everything else on their body is small. The bum, uh, it kind of extends, extend, accentuates the the ass cheeks for the most part, right? The ass cheeks. Man, someone say that to you. Hey, girl, like your ass cheeks. Sound like some nineties fifty fucking host, isn't it? Welcome to the show, and your ass cheeks are showing. But, um, yeah, I thought that was nuts. Because I remember there was this party, this Bashment Raven Angel that I used to go to back in the day. And I kind of had to stop going for a while because it got a bit fetishy, right? Because any girl that was, any kind of Scandinavian girl or British girl that was over the over 5 foot 10 and kind of got no love in the, in the kind of like standard Soho clubs should go to this bar in Angel, which the name escapes me, right next to the station, right? And they said these bashment raves, and I kid you not, right? Every single black dude in there was winding with the biggest white girl that they could find. Like whether they were a fridge, side of a door, whether they were fat, whether they were just curvy. Every single black guy in it was just like 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 Velcro on this girl. And I used to think it was so cool, right, for the girls because I knew, especially growing up in my area back in the day, you know, hanging out with these kind of Essex lads, right, or the, that kind of group. That for the most part, the bigger girls in those groups kind of didn't get any love and kind of had to, for the most part, settle for, you know, whatever they could get. Because most of the dudes in there wanted really stick thin women. And this was pre, this was like pre Kim Kardashian, that kind of era, or pre Jennifer Lopez, whoever started that curvy woman trend, right? That was when being really skinny was kind of like the in thing for guys. Um, that's what they were attracted to and for girls that's what they kind of aspired to right and if you remember that was maybe during the era of a tumblr as well when um look, there was the kind of like finstagram uh finsta finspiration or whatever when people when some girls on on tumblr were posting pictures of their rib cage and uh, when they were in bikini tops or their spinal cords like kind of protruding like that was when it was that cool to be that skinny or to show that kind of pelvis bone sticking out so that really like gaunt model look right when that was all in 
So when you're a bigger girl during those days, you've got no love. So I used to be so happy inside. Again, I don't know why, because I get happy for people when they when they when they when they uh, when they win. I used to be so happy for girls in that kind of rave when they just used to be winding with guys and they were huge and they were getting, you know, touched up and groped and they were getting shown affection, someone was sexually attracted to them. And I just thought that was so cool. But then it got a bit weird because then it started, it started to seem a bit fetishy. Like something to seem it started to seem like you know you know you know like I don't know it happens it happened to me a few times when you've been with a girl and they'll be like oh yeah I really I, I I don't really like white guys I like black dudes it's like ugh. you know you kind of feel like a little bit of a fetish you kind of feel like a bit of a, like a bit of a trophy that they got on their mantle so it kind of got a bit weird after a while going to that party seeing the same black guys going off the same big women you know they kind of had a thing with like having the biggest girl on them sort of thing. So I kind of stayed away from it. But there must be a thing with like black guys and little women, which I didn't know about. Again, maybe I'm naive about this whole thing because I don't really pay attention to people's relationships and what they're interested in or those kind of conversations people have on those kind of podcasts where they're like, oh, have you ever had a threesome? All that sort of boring shit. Maybe I'm missing out on some stuff, but Jesus Christ, man. There's little women in LA. There's a few black guys in there who are absolutely plowing through these little women. And I don't know, man. I'm not sure if I could do it personally, man. That's a bit weird, man. I'm not sure if I could do it. Personally, not weird, for, not weird because they look weird. Just I'll just feel a bit weird because they're so small, you know, that kind of idea. I don't know, man. I don't know. But I recommend you check it out. It's a really, really good show. And it kind of puts perspective again. If you're someone that has a victimhood mentality, I beg you watch this show. And you and you see some of these women who are single mothers, right? Being little women. So having the, the struggle and the pain of having to go through society being that high or being that size, the chronic pain. I didn't know that people, that little people suffer from, um, that have problems with their ears. Like loads of weird shit like that, right? With their balance, when they get pregnant, their balance goes all all off the charts. Like really strange things. And another weird thing as well that I picked up on is really odd. A lot of the little women, when they get pregnant, they wanna, they get bummed out when they have a normal sized kid. They say that because um, they get bummed out because the kid will not, never know. The pe- they kind of want to share their pain with somebody. <coughs> so they kind of want to give the kid lessons that they've kind of learned having to grow up in a kind of society that kind of takes a piss out of you or kind of uses you as cannon fodder. Literally cannon fodder. If you watch them Wolf of Wall Street and they shoot a midget out of the... or a little person out of the cannon. And that sort of stuff. I've always thought that was really weird. You know when people get little people to like... Um, do strip tees for them during a hen do a stag do that talk about objectif- objectification of human beings man forget all the other stuff happening in the workplace like actually it's just anyway whatever really really strange and i thought that was a very interesting insight some of them really get bummed out when they have a a little person um even so when they have a normal person as a when they have a normal sized person as a baby right when they want to give us a normal sized person and uh, they get a little bit bummed out. I thought that was very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Even though they know that health risk can involve with being little and life expectancy and all that sort of stuff, they they would rather um, the kid go have that shared um, le- have that have that shared experience than have a little than have a normal sized human who kind of doesn't have that experience or maybe kind of shuns their parents in that kind of regard. It's very, very interesting. I thought it was a very interesting uh, program overall. I recommend you check it out. Little Women LA. Definitely, definitely check that out. What's in the docket? Oh, Ben Baller interview on Hypebeast Radio. <clears throat> really good interview, actually. Um, I've not been the biggest fan of Ben Baller, I think, overall. Um, he kind of comes across like a little bit of a, an idiot, but I think he's very aware of that perception that he kind of uh, comes across as on, on the internet. And he kind of says numerous times, I'm a troll, I'm a troll, I'm a troll. But I thought he was a really good interview um, on Hypebeast Radio. Let me see if I can get it up here. Hypebeast... Da, da, da. High Beast Radio. Let's see if it's on. Uh... Oh, it's not. It's not uploaded. The video portion's not been uploaded yet. But I re- how can, highly recommend you check it out. Um, Ben Baller interview on High Beast Radio. He speaks a lot of good wisdom into the app, into the episode. There's loads of things about um his story. I think maybe because of the backlash he gets online, but he's been very, very honest about or very candid about some of the mistakes that he's made throughout the years. Um. When it comes to finances, when it comes to businesses, what I'm lucky. But I think even if you don't like him, his personality, wise, I think the one lesson to be gleaned from that interview on High Beast Radio is that he's a real hustler and he's a real survivor. Like he's come back from so many setbacks, right? Especially publicly uh, being kind of, you know, lambasted or privately having to move back with his sisters. I think um, 
uh, Jeff Staple actually mentions it, which is a good point, um, especially in the Asian society, even with black people as well, immigrants in general, taking an L on a business that didn't work out and then having to move back in with your sister. Uh, what that does to your ego, right? In that kind of machismo society where you're kind of meant to be the breadwinner. Even if your sister's older than you, you're meant to be the quote-unquote the leader of the family and you're having to move back in with your sister with, and all you have to, to your name is, I don't know, a couple car leases and loads of trainers, right? It must be so demoralizing, but he's come back again and again and bounced back again and again and again for setback for setback. And I really honestly do think his story has a lot. There is a lot of... Um, gems to be um taken from a lot of lessons to be learned from especially for the younger kids coming up in the industry and one particular story that i like a lot is um that he kind of touched upon which i hope kind of gets um rolled out onto into the industry at large is a sort of mentorship program he's take the kind of mentorship role he's taken <clears throat> on board with neek if you don't know who neek is neek is from um, anti-social anti-social social club uh, a brand that's kind of blown up exponentially over the last few years. They've kind of done collaboration with everybody under the sun. And Nick, Nick, Nick lives this like kind of very extreme lifestyle <clears throat> where he's got like a crazy mansion. He drives amazing, luxurious cars. And just, you know, he kind of living a life, right? Because he's kind of come from the streetwear age of like posting on uh, what do you wear today, threads on Nike Talk and becoming a bit of an internet meme. And then suddenly now he's blown up and he kind of, you know, has his own brand and he's kind of really taken over. But he's also kind of had a bit of a bit of a weird relationship with his customers. You know, there's been loads of things online about him, um, especially antisocial, where they don't ship stuff on time. And reputation took a bit of a dent. And um, uh, Ben Baller details in the Hypebeast Radio interview with Jeff Staple how he kind of took it upon himself to kind of like tell him to kind of wake up, do you know what I mean? Like and kind of get on top of him and kind of, you know, be a bit of a mentor and guide him through the process. And now he says that maybe... Um, ben, uh, he says hope he hopes that Nick's kind of like on the right path and I would hope that a lot of more OGs in the industry will do the same as opposed to like kind of looking down upon or poo-pooing a lot of these kids that are making crazy amounts of money on like merch or dad hats I would hope they do that because as weird as as this is as this is attached as, as some of the kids may be from the roots of streetwear or from the OGs that kind of pioneered the scene um, like it or not, these guys are the future. These guys are going to dictate what the next step or what the next evolution is going to be. Even if it is a return back to the streetwear roots, they're still going to be an instrumental part of the culture going forward. So it would be nice to see some of these OGs kind of take it upon themselves to kind of really uh, take some of these kids by scruff of neck like Ben Baller did with Neek and kind of really just help. Do you know what I mean? Just selfishly. Not even trying to help to kind of get a piece of the pie or to kind of seem relevant or to kind of get your face out there again. Just help. Because I didn't know nothing. Again, I don't follow. Don't get me wrong. I don't follow Ben Bull on social media but I had no idea about his link towards Neek and he kind of took it upon himself maybe they were friends before maybe it was something he saw that he could lend some help with but he took it upon himself to kind of just help out and kind of get him back on track and I think that's something that's very very commendable and something again that will help the help hold um hold the scene accountable and something that's going to help the scene in general in the future and I highly recommend you check it out if you're someone involved in the scene and you kind of have a you have a, a bit of a love-hate relationship with Ben Baller. I don't necessarily. I think he's a, an interesting character. I'm not a fan of the whole trolling thing because I don't necessarily think it's, it's necessary. I think you can kind of get you can kind of get away with kind of being uh, you can kind of get away with being Ben Baller without being a troll. You don't need to be a troll. I think he just does that because you know it's his way to kind of it's his self de self defense mechanism against some of the hurtful things people say against him. But I don't necessarily think he needs to do that. But even though, if you have a, another perception of Ben Bola, I highly recommend you check out the interview. I'm, I'm sure it will change. Um, I'm not a fan of the little skits, a little in-between summaries that Jeff Staple does on, inter on the fucking podcast. But, you know, it's, it's a bit overly produced, you know, seasons with that malarkey. But I think, in general, the whole thing is really, really good. And it's good to hear two OGs kind of bouncing off each other and kind of, you know, really talking about the old days of how they came up and some of the lessons gleaned. And I think a lot of the stuff, if you think about it, a lot of the stuff kind of lends itself to a lot of the people that... Um, um, Ben Ball has been associated with, you know, with ASAP Bari, you know, he's kind of gone through a lot of stuff in public with the whole sexual assault allegations with Ian Connor is going to kind of gone through a whole roller coaster of stuff that he's kind of been involved with and all the all kind of other guys involved in the org umbrella. So I think all the, all the kind of hurdles that Ben Ball has had to overcome have lended its, have kind of been really instrumental in the kind of advice he's been able to give people who have also gone through the same things and just kind of trying to navigate this sort of like, um, era in the into now because it must be weird man to be a kid at that age and have millions sitting in your paypal shopify or whatever account from selling hats or from selling hoodies and shit with like a simple printed logo on the front it must be fucking must be super bugged out 
So I'm happy that someone of his stature is willing to lend a hand and also isn't bitter, you know, because he's gone through a lot of shitty things in the industry. He isn't super bitter about everything. And also willing to, you know, do that sort of thing. So that's nice to see. I recommend you check it out. I'll put the link in the show notes below, but definitely recommend you check out Hype Beast Radio featuring Ben Bola. Oh, um, obviously talking about Ben Bola's cohorts of friends. Have you seen Ian Connor posting a picture of Bin Laden? Which has been quite interesting to see. I guess, you know, these streetwear people, these, these street, the streetwear is a weird industry, right? Because by its very nature, you know, these kind of controversial t-shirts or memes are part of the streetwear fabric, right? Kind of pushing the edge. Um, Cause I remember even during the whole Bin Laden heyday, uh, just just after 9-11, when it was cool to joke about 9-11, there were a few brands that were making like Twin Tower tribute t-shirts or Bin Laden T or Bin Laden tees or a few rappers who were kind of calling themselves whatever Bin Laden, do you know what I mean? Or Taliban, do you know what I mean? Do you remember that, that there was an era where that was kind of in? Um, and I don't know why, um, Ian Cohen decided to re- resurrect the meme of Ben Bol, I mean of uh, Bin Laden, but I guess you know maybe with with the introduction of his brand Sicko that's meant to be coming out very soon. A lot of people have been wearing. I think Virgil was pictured wearing it. A few other people during the runway show uh, had the hoodie on too, which would be interesting too if if Sicko kind of picks up because of Sicko mode that um the track on Travis Scott's album that might be a nice little weird tie-in, right? This whole this phrase kind of taking foot um because I because he's got some really good names in it. The, the Revenge. Uh, Revenge and X and Storm. Um, that's kind of good, right? After that whole thing when he came back um, from the whole sexual allegations mode. Um, then he's got Sicko, right? With this whole brand. I really like it. Taking a whole Bjork logo and flipping it and making a Sicko logo. And then this whole Bin Laden thing, which is very strange. I don't get it again, but I just think it's a thing of like, you know, just trying to get some attention and try and get some eyes on your brand. I'll kind of get it up on here so you guys can see it. But yeah, he tweeted. Um, what did he say? Something about Idol? Is it his Idol or something? Let's see if I can get up on here, on the screen. I sound about him being his idol. Yeah, legend, actually. But Osama Bin Laden is a legend. Besides, so here's a caption. So it's in Connor there. But then, you know, by the very to- same token, Her- Heron Preston is fairly older and a bit more worldly and has a bit more knowledge of these kind of worldly affairs and should know a little bit better. Made the t-shirt with Vladimir Putin on the front. Do you know what I mean? Who jails and kills journalists. Do you know what I mean? It's just like a bit, uh, Mr. President. A little bit weird, but again, you know, people have to push the envelope when it comes to streetwear. You have to be a little bit controversial. You have to kind of piss people off in order to kind of get some eyes on your brand. But I don't know if that's a long game I'd like to play, you know? It, that's not really my remit, especially if it's something I don't necessarily believe in 100%. I'm not really that familiar with, I'm not really that educated on with in general. I don't know, man. It's not something that I necessarily want to do. But I don't know, like, you know, streetwear is one of those kind of things. There's so many brands out there. There's so many people making brands or starting to launch brands. It's hard to get your name out there once you've fallen out of the kind of public zeitgeist so you don't have the kind of, you know, cohorts or friends around you that can kind of prop up your brand. It's kind of hard to get exposure. So sometimes maybe just doing crazy shit like that is going to get you where you need to get to. But not for me, personally. Again, not for me, but I see where they're going with it. So, yeah, um, I think Sicko launches very soon. I think Ian Connor posted a couple images of him being... A, is it in the factory yet? This is a couple of ones he posted recently. So I think Sicko Hoodies should be launching very, very soon. So let's see if he's got a, a fucking Bin Laden tea coming out soon to time with it. That'll be very, very strange. Um, what else? Uh, oh, Jomo article on New York Times. There's a great article that came out about Jomo, the joy of missing out. Um, I've been I've been on this kick lately because I'm not sure if you guys have noticed or no one's probably knows no one cares but I've been off Instagram I deleted the app off my phone I signed out through web so I've been off Instagram for maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of maybe more than a couple of weeks maybe three weeks in general I've not been using it at all and then when I do go back to using it I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be posting loads of my own material I've got tons of tons of film for films that I haven't developed yet I'm gonna be posting loads of offcuts onto instagram and then posting the whole kind of um story on my tumblr which you can check out if you go to axiomzinger.com i have my photography link on there you can check out all my photography bits and pieces but i've been a little bit because uh, obviously I've, done, I've got this whole micro goal thing that i'm trying to do between now and the end of august i kind of want to be focused you know i kind of want to have my have my attention all on the kind of creative output that i want to put out there right and you can't 
do it at the same time as have being on your phone and being on your feed and checking what people are posting it just doesn't work for me personally and as per usual i'm sure you guys have all had the same sort of experience you kind of just get caught in this whole whirlwind of like checking other people's accounts and checking what they're into comparing yourself and where you're at and it's just not something that i'm really fond of and i think you know especially in summer when everyone's kind of doing quote-unquote cool things and you feel like you're living a boring life it's not what i want to do and I've, i don't know i've just generally felt a little a lot more happy and i think this 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 kind of harsh that I'm doing in the beginning now and I'm going to roll it out and when I'm going to reintroduce myself back onto the app I think it will give me some good habits and I've been feeling good but it's been weird to see everyone else kind of jumping not ever I think the the worldwide zeitgeist has been lent has been kind of moving in this direction especially since um I think the iOS convention is it the iOS convention or the, or the Apple event recently they know they kind of announced this new feature on iOS um the new update that's gonna involve um an ability to kind of track how long you spend on some social networks and you can set yourself a limit or a target. So you can only set yourself a limit. So I only want to, only want to spend two hours um, total on all social media accounts and it'll kind of give you a reminder on when you've kind of reached that limit so you can kind of not always be on your phone staring down. You know, you can kind of get on a train and everyone's kind of in trance in this sort of like weird gaze on their phone. Um, maybe you can kind of kick yourself out of that limit. So that's something that I'm kind of trying to do now at the moment. And it's been going on so far so good. And there's this article on the New York Times I'll link I'll link up and put um, on the show notes. It's called Jomo article, uh, Joe of Missing Out. You should definitely check it out. It's a really good extensive article. It kind of breaks down some of the things that I've been thinking. And the title is How to Make How to Make This the Summer of Missing Out. Um, I'll put it up on the screen. Um, it's written by Haley Phelan and it's on the New York Times, but I'll link it in the show notes as well. Um Basically, I'll, I'll read the kind of introduction so you kind of get the gist of it. Um, uh, yeah, da, 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 come from the screen now. You could say that, and the article says the following. You could say I had had the epiphany when in the middle of the flight to Los Angeles and the busy New York workday, the Wi-Fi stopped working. Two very odd things happened in quick succession. First, I did not fall out of the sky. Second, after recovering from my initial fury impulsion, I worked more intensely and productively than I had in ages. What was this strange, unburdened feeling, I wondered. And as I stepped off the plane hours later, um, turns out the internet had a word for it already. Jomo. Joe is not misspelling of mojo, but rather it stands for joy of missing out. The antithesis of FOMO, fear of missing out. Jomo is about the disconnecting um, and opting out and being okay, just where you are. It's not like that old age wisdom about being present, only retrofied for a world in which missing an email could be a fireball offense and deleting Bumble could mean you don't go on a date for another three months. Like it or not, we need our technology devices. We just don't need them as much as we think we do. Jomo is about finding that balance. And that's basically where I'm at at the moment. It's just about finding balance because these social media platforms like Instagram, all these kind of things and Facebook, they're really important in terms of, for me anyway, for, in terms of me spreading my message, getting the stuff out there and getting a, a, attention and awareness on the stuff that I'm doing, whether it's photography, DJing, um, writing um if i start doing stand-up comedy all those kind of things it's all kind of very important channels for me but i also kind of feel like i need to have a balance and i need to i need to put out as much as i take in or i need to only take put out as much as i want and then kind of step back away from it because at the moment i felt as if like i was taking in too much information not putting out enough information so now i want to creatively put out a lot more and obviously want to do some more stuff in real life and it's allowing me opportunity to read a lot more and just be generally plugged out plus because especially for my job i'm i'm stuck on my laptop i'm working in front of a screen for eight hours every single day i like to or seven hours i like to kind of have some time away from the computer which is why usually when i take my lunch break i take the full hour to kind of read I just completely disconnect and just sit in a park and just read a book. Do you know what I mean? Or just stare into the sky or just people watch. Just completely disconnect a bit and just kind of find a bit of balance, a bit of equilibrium in my life. And this is what that article is kind of speaking at the moment. And I'll link it in the show notes so you guys can check it out. But joy of missing out, I'm definitely into that at the moment. It's probably a little bit more probably a little bit more um like i said it probably fits our modern culture a bit more than being present i guess in that regard because you know the joy of missing out is basically is being present because you're you're allowing yourself to kind of not be involved in the group think of oh it's coachella oh it's this oh it's that oh it's this kind of festival everything is a big deal but you know and now it's always good because i have genuine conversations because i generally don't know what people are doing so when people say, oh, yeah, I've been on holiday, didn't you see? It's like, no, nah, I didn't because I haven't been on my feed. I'm not checking shit. My Facebook feed on my desktop computer is blocked. I don't know what people get up to, which is amazing um, for the most part. And, yeah, I'm just enjoying it in general. I, I, I recommend you check it out. Maybe it's something you're already thinking about at the moment, but that's something I've been pondering for the odd few minutes of my life. 
Anyway, I think we just reached an hour of the podcast, episode number 91. It's been a pretty intense um, morning, I guess, for the most part. Apologies for that. I guess, you know, when you come out from working out, you just feel pumped, man. You want to spread your message to everybody else out there. As always, thanks again for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow. Um, keep an eye on my website, actionzinger.com, for general updates on my DJ gigs. I've updated a few dates on there. I'm DJing this Friday, next Friday, and a Friday after that. And again, the bank holiday Sunday. Check again the my DJ gigs uh, listings on my website at www.actionzinger.com for the gigs on there i got all my blog entries on there check out my blog that i'm posting every day on i got my new reading list that i've just published that you guys can check out and all the other malarkey and all the other links on the other social pits i'm doing what else am i doing during this week i think oh i think that might be actually again try and get a haircut get this these fades the size kind of shaving down so they're not as you know hairy because i kind of don't know maybe it's the beard as well it makes me kind of hot i don't know what it is but i kind of maybe need to kind of get the beard redone or done in a different way maybe i'll go back to being a good maybe i do the christiano the other goatee actually i like that christian goatee what i say goatee that for you know the older you get the more african you start sounding i don't know why in it right the traditional you start sounding weirdly african but yeah i might i might do a little goatee here go back to a little you know the whole chris moling what, what am i saying chris smalling and goatee chris smalling goatee the little r&b goatee a little triangle i might do that maybe as well for my facial hair overall but anyway who cares it's the excellent english episode number 91 thank you once again for checking me out it's been an absolute pleasure i love hanging out and talking to you guys again see you again very very soon 